I was an administrative officer. I was the compliance guy. I was a CPA. I watched the SNL grow from $80 million balance sheet to $1.4 billion in four years. That's 13 times growth in four years. How'd they do it? Whew. Blowing and going. Loan documentation in a loan file might consist of a bar napkin where the original deal may have been written down, if there was any at all. The growth became such that, of course, then the new regulators began to attempt to supervise and input to the savings and loans. Texas, by far, was the state with the most savings and loans that had the most owners, entrepreneur developers. So that meant that Texas had the most savings and loans that had the most problems because of the loans that they were making. In that regard, the loans were for almost anything. Turns out that they were primarily for the people that ran them. They were making them for themselves. That's how they, they maintained a lifestyle. The uh, savings and loans at the time, they had the ear of Speaker of the House then, whose name was Jim Wright. He was a congressman from Fort Worth. And they had his ear in that uh, during the weekends, they would get on the phone and they would call him and tell him, we can't make any money. We can't earn our way out of this because the regulators are on top of us. They're telling us we can't do this and we can't do that and we've got to do it this way and that's not going to be able to help us make any money. So you've got to get them off our backs. Jim Wright believed them. Picked up the phone, would call the head of the Federal Home Loan Bank Board and bend his ear. Then, of course, he then would turn around and bend the other regulators' ear, so everything just kind of traveled downhill. So the similarities in terms of what was going on then and now are very similar. They didn't have the phrase then called kicking the can down the road. It was earn their way out. got to a point to where it wasn't fun to work there anymore. Having prepared and maintained the loan manual, hoping that people were following it, assuming that they were. Of course, I found out later on that they weren't. In doing this, I also learned that, uh, uh, that being on one end of the building, thinking I was a compliance guy and I'm okay because I'm not on the other end of the building with all those other people. I don't, go, I don't fly on the jets to California. I don't hang out on the yachts. I don't play with the prostitutes. I don't schmooze with the politicians. I'm too busy coaching Pee Wee football and Little League Baseball in Coppell. Anybody know where Coppell is? That didn't help me much, though, because I thought I was going to go off and become a consultant. I've seen how an SNL needed to be run from the standpoint of compliance, and most SNLs then were having a problem with compliance. So I thought I'd have a great, uh, uh, a great uh, set of clients. However, what I learned was that I had a lot of baggage, having worked with the savings and loan. That when I would talk to people on the telephone about coming over and introducing my services, uh, they would say to me, yes, Mr. Smith, please come and talk to us, but while you're here, don't touch anything. It's like I had the plague for where I had worked. Where I had worked, the SNL had a pretty good reputation I wouldn't say pretty good, pretty bad reputation is what I mean. 